Hello, my name is John Reynolds. On this episode of Extraordinary Life Stories, I'm talking to mission-led entrepreneur, Jordan Brompton. Jordan is the trailblazing co-founder of My Energy. She's following her passion for the renewable energy and sustainability, relentlessly striving to achieve the My Energy mission to create a kinder, more sustainable future for our planet. What a fantastic purpose. With a real mission-led why driving her, I want to know how she's juggling growing a successful business, making time for her family, and navigating a government U-turn on carbon zero policies. I'm really looking forward to talking with Jordan. Jordan, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Tell me, who is Jordan Brompton? Still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> but at this moment in time, I'm best known for being the co-founder and the CMO of a company called My Energy. So take me back to a young Jordan growing up. What did you want to be when you were growing up? I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. I was into dancing, I was into singing. Um, I thought I was going to be, I don't know, a dancer for Beyonce or something like oh, that. Um, yeah. I, knew I, I knew I wanted to do something, but I didn't quite know what. No. Um, but I was always a real hard worker. Um, my, I grew up watching my parents not have very much. They're mm -hmm. really hard working parents. Um, and I didn't ever want to put any pressure on them, like added pressure on them. So as soon as I was old enough to get a job, like paper round, How Sunday old market, that? 12, 13 years okay. old, I started working and getting my own cash. I was always like wanting my own independence, I guess. So I think my entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit came from around that age of wanting to that. detach. Yeah from my parents and it was more not detached but just not add pressure no. to them because I saw how hard they were working, always provided me a lovely life, amazing life, I never felt like I went without anything no. but I understood the value of a pound and yeah. I understood how yeah my, how hard my dad and mum had to work for it. So. And also you wanted that financial independence by the sound of it, yeah, one really to protect them and also to, to have your own Yes, yeah, so play. I started hustling from a young age and then yeah. you know going into early teens and uh, late teens I would do like three or four jobs to keep the money coming in mm. and I'd burn myself out because I'd be working in a hairdresser's in the day, going to a restaurant straight after that, working yeah. in a nightclub after that and then starting the whole cycle yeah. again. And I found that like working and doing that, that, I got a lot of life skills and good communication yeah. skills. Wasn't very good at school, could, no. struggled to focus, didn't know what I wanted to do, didn't want to go to uni. Uni wasn't an option for me. I grew up in Grimsby. It was, um, you know, it wasn't presented to me as an option. It was you'll be a hairdresser or you'll be in traveling tourism. But I had this naive, innate feeling that I was born to do something more. I just didn't quite know how to tap into it yet um, I until that. I started working. So work, yeah. work, work was where I like started to blossom and get my yeah. independence. And I always very ambitious, like I've got a natural ambition. Yeah. So I would, you know, just try and work my way up in every job and I'd mm -hmm. try and take on every role. And if I saw someone want doing a good job at something, I'd step in and help or I'd, you know, I'd go in as a waitress, but I'd end up like running the place because I'd be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, why aren't you doing that? Or why aren't you doing that? And I'll just step in and do that. I'm not naturally one of those people it. that takes on the yeah. I'll do it approach. And a big thing for you is is sustainability. You yes. a mission to, so when did that start? And when did you turn all that experience mm -hmm. and entrepreneurial spirit yeah. into ultimately what you're doing now? So weirdly, I'm a bit of an anarchist. Okay. <laughs> I don't expect that answer. <laughs> but it was like, no, I've always liked to break away from the system or look at systems and think, how do you innovate around that? And um, Disruptor. Disruptor. So a when I met Lee, Lee's my business partner, mm. he's the CEO of My Energy yeah. and, and other co-founder. Uh, he was an electrician out fitting solar panels and he invented this little gizmo to keep the solar power that he was fitting on people's homes, keep the power within the home. So essentially okay. take you off grid yeah. and take you energy independent just by heating your water because people couldn't afford batteries back in the day sure. when solar was on the boom. So he, um, he invented this little device and I saw this ad and he heard about a, a job going in admin. And obviously I'm not I'm gonna just sit around and do admin. I straight away started doing sales and I was like, oh, how many are you selling? I could sell more of them because he was only selling to like local electricians. So then yeah. I'd be like, how do you get in front of more electricians? Wholesalers. So then I started banging down the doors of the wholesalers trying to sell these little devices for Lee. Yeah. But it wasn't even because like I saw the bigger picture mm. of what Lee was trying to do even more so than he did. Like I saw the opportunity more than he did, I think of, of energy independence and mm -hmm. what that meant and capturing that, um, keeping that power up in your own home mm. and taking the power back of, of your electricity and I just started forming this whole narrative around that and then when we developed the car charger the, the zappy car charger yeah which was the first in the world to use solar energy and balance the home so if you've got a, a shower on or something like that 
um, it would lower the power to the car. So we were just looking at the market, like this EV boom was coming, how do we make it as sustainable as possible so we don't fall down the same trap as what we did with diesel and things like that, where you get told something's good for you and then you're like, is it really? Yes. Or is this the next thing? A political play. Yeah. But yeah. when I saw that actually, no, I believed in solar, I yeah. believed in being self-sustaining, I believed, yeah. and then I was like, how do we make that greener and greener and greener mm. to the point where you eliminate every argument that electric vehicles aren't, aren't good. Yeah. Um, and it's and a that's big... my passion. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> I love it. And and is there a drive there that really is to, to protect the planet? And that, you know, it's because yeah. there's a real opportunity there from yeah. a business point of view, from an entrepreneur point of view. But is it a, a, a helpful byproduct, or is it you know a massive thing for you that also you are actually not only helping the planet but yeah. also helping people that in context of unaffordable bills right now? Exactly. The conversation we had earlier. Mm -hmm before filming where you know people are even choosing to eat or heat I mean, yeah. how can that be the case in know, the it's UK it's a developed country so how how are you meshing that all together to form that passion it's a massive mesh of all of mm. that all of that I can see like the end game of where um, solar power or renewable energy is no longer a luxury it's more of a, it's a necessity yeah. so I'm like how do we make it affordable and to have a you know a startup you've, you've got to you've got economies of scale and things like that. We've got to figure that mm. out. And I think it's um, it's an ever evolving, that's like the end game is that everybody's got solar in my mind yeah. and everybody's got energy independence, but it's, it's one good, step it's at a goal. time. It's a one step at a time to get sure. there. And it's also about educating and pulling people onto the mm. journey, but it's absolutely like decarbonization is a massive passion of mine. Um, the fact that it's helping the planet is an added bonus. For me, it was more about energy security and energy independence and this choice of, of removing fuel poverty. That was my initial drivers. Sure. And then the climate crisis has been like obviously growing over the past few years and the electric vehicles and the route to net zero has all been part of that and feeding into it. Mm. Um, and obviously it's very important, but I'm also not naive that building an electric car and building batteries and building solar power still don't have a carbon footprint of course they do it's sure. all about the longevity of it and making sure that it's yeah yeah that you're making the best use of it and then it's making sure that it's recycled and things yeah. like that so it's not all from a climate um approach no. it's obviously very helpful that it is i'm not naive enough to think that it doesn't have a carbon footprint but it's surely better mm. than drilling oil out of the ground using a lot of energy to Fossil process fuels. it and then burning it for no reason it. into nothing. Because like, that's all we knew however yeah. many years ago. You, you yeah, should be evolving. That. Exactly. And what are we going to do? Like if oil runs out, what yeah. are we going to do? Sit on our hands and it's just... It's a finite resource. Like, no, it's so we've got right. to evolve. So it takes a mix of all sorts. So I'm very much like, I don't like being in a camp of like, you drive a petrol, you're a bad person. You don't love the polar bears. No. I'm like, let's all... <laughs> <laughs> Let's all talk of ways of evolving together and yeah. have a grown-up conversation and stop this divisive nature that's, that's yeah. forming. So and that's is, what I try and do. Yeah, and that whole evolution, being smarter, working with um, advancements of time and knowing it's a finite resource, let alone the fact that it's awful to the planet. And actually, I'm going to annoy you now okay. um, because I'm going to bring up the government, our current oh, yeah, government, yeah, yeah. and the fact that you, you had effectively their support with the carbon zero yeah. You know, you were probably working towards that. That was really in your favour. And yeah. then they U-turn. We're filming now January 24. So mm -hmm. at the end of last year, you know, you just done a, a you know, congratulations on a brilliant raise. Thank you. All focusing on growth. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, something like that happens where the lack of consistency, you know, we yeah. should all be pointing forwards, the world, let alone the country. How do you... How it's been like it's not been nice not no. gonna lie and i've been we've been victims of it a few times and um, when we was growing the business the first time around the, the little devices that i was telling you yeah. about that puts the power to the hot water that was all in the solar boom yeah. and um and then they pulled the you know the feeding tariffs pretty quickly and mm. all of our customers went out of business overnight everybody thought the market was dead and it was mainly yeah. that was like no we still believe in this technology and we still believe in this and that's why we wanted to have the dream of restarting again with my energy but um, I really thought that the government had got it this time, like I felt. And, and after COVID and everybody wanting cleaner air yeah. and they switched to EVs, I thought, oh, well, you know, it's a lot safer. We ploughed all of our profit like into growth, 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 growth. Yeah. Like every penny has gone back into the business. And then, like, as you say, raising cash and we've been... Then there's been comp component shortages all over the yeah. world for like microchips. So we overinvested in that so that we'd never get short, caught mm -hmm. short because we had this massive order book. All of these are smart decisions at the time. Yeah. And then the, if the market's like, it's not declined, but it's plateaued yeah. in this last year. And when you've built a business to potentially like go even bigger or IPO or something mm. like that, um, you've then got to make adjustments. And it's yeah. the biggest 
craziest time that I've ever been through as an entrepreneur and as a business owner and it's a lot to handle. I'm still working through that but it's also like it's not a terrible doom and gloom story because the business is still super successful and um, we're just repositioning for growth. It's just a challenging macro environment for everybody at the minute. Every every founder that I speak to, every entrepreneur that I speak to is working 10 times harder for the same result. Yeah, ditto. I mean property, you know, the Mm -hmm. EPC ratings and the fact that properties that were not going to be yeah, in a position where you could actually rent them as a la- as a landlord, you know, so people were selling properties and mm-hmm. people were terrified, didn't have the cash flow, you know, the uh, the actual cash to spend on the properties for the solar panels and so on. Exactly. And then only to find that the whole things you turned and didn't need to worry about it, which you know in some cases has helped people, mm-hmm. but the bigger picture is all of that was a necessity. Let's do yeah. that. Let's um, encourage just, the green exactly. revolution, and then the government steps back and you. You're sort of touching on something that's really close to me. That business is hard, yeah. You know, so and dark. from an entrepreneurial so point of view, which we both are, and the kind of the the Instagram uh, images of these people sort of talking to the camera, saying, "Oh, just you know, be your own boss. It's great. Look at me in Dubai and mm-hmm. so on." But actually, you know, you've had to pivot a number of times. You're going to have yeah. to do it again. Yeah. You know, what advice would you give? to someone starting out in business as an entrepreneur who's successful. Yeah, my number one advice is just be scrappy, like be ready to fight every day because it's Mm. just problem after problem that you've got to get over. There's no, I used to have this vision of entrepreneurship that you you see it online and you think you made it and and that's that, got a successful business. I didn't realize that if you built a business to be a certain, like even at the top, top of your game as market leader, it's more difficult to maintain that position yeah. than it is to rise to that position. Although yeah. you're facing all your challenges yeah. at that time, and each one of them, each step has been hard, just actually hanging on to it is like even harder. So I just think be prepared to be scrappy. And then and then I touch on a subject that everybody thinks is a bit taboo or don't like to talk about, but as a founder, and if I hadn't done this, I think I would have literally been in a, a mental institution or I'd have a breakdown because I took some money off the table. And I think that that was the best decision I ever made. I call it sleep money. I just had a little bit of money out so that if everything went wrong, I wasn't going to be in a terrible place. And that's allowed me just to make smarter decisions, but also not freak out or make totally irrational decisions because I'm quite an emotional person as well. And all this is very new, like Mm. managing a business of this size. And I think sometimes you can panic and want to pull the emergency cord but if you're sure. a little bit personally cushioned yeah um it definitely helps your mental clarity and and you need to have that and i think you know you're grafting as an entrepreneur to make money yeah. you're trying to make a social impact you're trying to do all the yeah. things that the business does but you are you, you went into this to make money so there's no one that can take that away from you and actually yeah. you're a better person for it if you're mentally focused yeah and i'd love to ask you that actually because it's talked about so much in the world of, of business that sort of positive mindset mm-hmm. and and being physically fit as well mm-hmm. so i'd love to know what you do yeah um both to, to sort of you know you could say you're just immersed in the business and the problem solving itself is, yeah. what it is, but is there anything you do to kind of practice positive mindset and keep physically fit yeah um physically fit has taken a back burner for <laughs> quite some time now because i've got a four-year-old as well and i used to love dancing i'd like i'd do my zumba i like anything that's sort of not it's like cheat exercising where you don't feel like you're exercising but yeah, you are like but it's fun as well yeah right? when it's fun yeah. um but i haven't done that in a while i can't even right. lie so at the minute for me it's like getting out for a walk with a podcast on um, and yeah. like that's where i get all of my information i love podcasts they say that's us. the best form of exercise though. yeah if you do nothing else and walk, you walk it's the best thing because then need. i'm getting a bit of nature a bit of fresh yeah. air grounding myself a bit not yeah. looking at my phone you know, although i've got a podcast going on um yeah. And I do try and um, meditate a little bit on an evening. Like I'll put on a YouTube sort of like mental clarity, um, help you get into a deep sleep um, if I've had a really hectic day. So it's just something, a voice Mm. to focus on. Um, And then that's what I sort of do to look after my mental health a little bit, but physical. I really want to get into ice baths. I wish I could tell you that I was doing that, but I'm not at the minute. I'm looking at getting one. I go to my local gym and I'll get in the cold pond water and it's hell. But it does make you, you don't, you're not thinking about anything for that split second no, and that's a can't. nice break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking to get into that more, but yeah, nothing inspirational for you other than just trying to get by. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it's just so talked about. And, and uh, the other thing as well, this whole starting at four in the morning, five in the morning, oh, no. in the morning. do you do that? Nope. Yeah, cool. <laughs> no, I mean, kids to, wake you up anyway, right? Yeah, so I'd love to whole, be that person, yeah. but it's like seven o'clock alarm goes off and I'm like, oh. 
It's actually really refreshing to have that conversation. I try and do a workout every morning. I try and do sorry, but it's it's hard and it's not always practical, right? No. And then there's a little voice in the brain. We've all got this inner voice, yeah. business person. We're like, oh, you didn't do that. Oh sometimes. god, yeah. But sometimes it's just not. The voices in the head are like yeah. horrible to you, aren't they? They're just constant. Right? And you touched on it, right? I mean, being in business, particularly as an entrepreneur, shareholders, you know, growth, and mm -hmm. and then trying to have a life, trying to do the walk, mm -hmm. and trying to be a good uh, mum yeah. and, and, a, and a, a good wife. Yeah. How do you juggle that? It's hard. Mm. It's really, really hard. And it's meant you tear yourself into shreds. But I just mm. try my best every day. Um, I'm still not as present as I'd like to be because sometimes mm. it's so hard. You'll know this is being being an entrepreneur if you've mm. had a really hectic day and then you come home, like literally open the door and Bonnie's like, mommy, play with me. Yeah. And it's like those words. I'm like, all I want to do is play with her and be engaged. But I also just want to slump on the sofa yeah. and not talk. And yeah. then like you get home There's to the There's a different Jordan that's got to come out. And, and, yeah, yeah, and then I think I look at my phone and I think I've had texts off friends um, that I haven't replied to for a few days. And, and then I think, oh God, I said yes to this when I was feeling extra extroverted and confident and now I don't want to do it and I'm like you know, having a breakdown it's like every day is just you're just figuring it out and when there's so much yeah. pressure on at work yeah you can get a bit irrational you just have to I just I take myself for a walk I like put on some music or something and I think yeah. so, come on sort your head out like, yeah. it's fine and, and then on a weekend I'll make sure that I definitely spend good quality time with yeah. my daughter and my husband and that always just makes me feel better yeah I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, both away from the family now, London and yeah. so on. And then, you know, just as well, I don't say support a football team as long as then it would be a whole different level. But just those weekends are yeah, precious. Nice and, and the time I can get in the week, um, you've got to do it. You've got to make a conscious effort. You know? yeah. And actually, I'm intrigued. When you do go for your walk and listen to podcasts, what do you listen to? Um, I listen to a right mix. Um, <laughs> it depends if I want to really switch off and just listen to like nothingness. I'll listen to Call Her Daddy, um, which is a, just a funny podcast where she yeah. gets people, um, celebrities on and chats about all sorts of raunchy stuff. <laughs> it's quite funny. And then I listen escapism to that. Yeah, it's escapism because well, right? it's nothing. I don't yeah, have yeah, to connect it. to it. But if I want to learn, I'll listen to uh, Beat in Your Jeans, yeah. which I find is a really interesting podcast yeah. with Dr. Doug Lyle. He's yeah. amazing. I listen to Jordan Peterson's podcast. Yep. I listen to Michaela Peterson's podcast. I listen to Joe Rogan. I listen to um, Stephen Bartlett. Yeah. Um, so it just depends what no, sort I of mood the, I'm in. It depends yeah. on the guest. I do. And I, Fern yes. Cotton. I like Fern Cotton's Happy She's Place happy as well. Place, yeah. And I've listened to Elizabeth Day, um, How to Fail. Yeah. Quite recently. And that's that's been really good for me because this whole entrepreneurial um, business side of things where there's always a fear of failure in, mm -hmm. in terms of how I was coming through. You know, I wouldn't try something because what if you fail? So that embracing of the fact that actually the only way you're going to learn yeah. is by failing. So have you have you had that experience in business, in life, where you yeah. can almost identify that if something that went wrong hadn't happened, you wouldn't be where you are now? Oh, yeah, so many times. Um, I'm trying to think of a specific mm example but one um one was when covid happened we were nearly gonna shut everything down and mothball the business right. and it was a big decision like you know because we didn't know which way the government was going to go we didn't know what it was no. but there was the gut feel to actually you know lean into this the government has said manufacturing can stay open we'll make sure everybody else is working from home mm. and we'll actually invest in components and i think if we hadn't have done that mm. which we very nearly didn't we it's nearly just great bunkered down and thought we'll yeah. ride this wave um and wait until <laughs> open the curtains and come out but we, we decided to lean into it and invest yeah. in that time and actually when the market took off and we were best served we were to, well placed yeah we were well placed to deal with it and i think there's been scenarios where that's a, that's a success story but we we almost didn't and i'm trying to think of explicit examples where i felt like a failure I guess when we've had to readjust the business and if we've yeah. had to like let people go, that's never, ever easy. No. It's like I take it so bad yeah. and, I, and I feel You're a proper deeply, people person, aren't you? So you've yeah. got, you have, you're a team. It consumes my entire yeah. mind and I feel like the biggest failure. And it's mm. like, I know, and, and I, I try so hard to separate because people that are seasoned entrepreneurs and business owners just say it's just, just that's just business it's not, it's not yep. personal it's just what you have to do yeah. you, have to, you have to cut an arm off to and that's save the, the brutal body. side of being an entrepreneur as well isn't it you have to make those decisions yeah and actually you know the business could fail if you don't and so actually then I mean, you're not being a good business person but it's hard but, oh it's so hard and that's the biggest thing where i like i mentally feel like a failure but um, mm. but sometimes you like you say you've got to got to lose a limb to save no, the body explain that really well and and sitting here now you ultimately have been incredibly successful mm. And, and you know the trajectory is exciting. Yeah. How do you define success? 
um, yeah, I find it uncomfortable when you call me successful. It's weird because I'm knew like, you would. yeah, I'm like, ah, I'm a, um. <laughs> well, you're you're on your journey. Yeah, I'm but on if a you journey. stop now and and, and anyone that uh, knows you with no mutual friends and so on, yeah. and I can tell you this, you know, I enjoy telling this. You know, they, 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 the, the opinion of you is, oh, she's a trailblazer. She's amazing. What she's doing is incredible, yeah, and that's because that of who you are. No, I know. <laughs> I'm making it more, more uncomfortable, but it's it's a compliment. Thank you. But I, I I don't know if you've stopped to actually think. There's almost two questions. How do you define success? Yeah. Um, in context of probably business and personal, because they might be slightly different. I think personally, it's always freedom. I think just freedom to be able to make choices, freedom yeah. to be able to take time off if you needed to, freedom yeah. to be be comfortable financially. Yeah. For me, that's success. It's not like, oh my God, I need a Ferrari or I need this, I need that. Mm -hmm. I'm not about that. I'm literally no. about time. Time for me yeah. is success. If I've got time with my family who I love and my friends and I'm making decisions that I can afford totally. to make yeah. that for me is ultimate um success yeah business wise i literally won't stop until we've got a million connected customers in the uk and until we're like number one energy independence Brilliant. electronics provider around the world and yeah. people understand my energy like for me business success is way after i'm gone the my energy logo is still out there with the big brands i want it to just be truly recognized yeah. forever and, ever. and people a legacy and people yeah. to look at it and feel warm and fuzzy to it and not look at it as big corporate Evil. Yeah, yeah. I want people to feel good when they, when yeah. they see the brand. And tell me, we we talked about off camera. You mentioned the kind of the kind of element of freedom mm -hmm. with uh, success. Mm -hmm. and you mentioned the Ferrari, yeah. pink Audi. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. And <laughs> then and then now. the way you're laughing, it's fun, right? There's business is hard. It's challenging, yeah. and so on. But there's an element of you where you're like, I can see you're just like, I'm going to make this fun where I can. Yeah. Which people can judge you for, right? Yeah, it's like oh, she yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. You know, she's, she's not doing any work, and so on. I bet that. Oh God, yeah, And I've had a bit of that on, on my side. It's like you don't know what I. Yeah. But but in that, in context of social media, the the um the attention that that car's got and the fact that I'm even bringing it up and yeah, so yeah, yeah. and how you've looked to try and be fun in business is yeah. that something that you get a bit of a hard time for as well oh yeah yeah I yeah. get challenged on it all the time and some people might roll their eyes at it or look at it a bit funny but hmm. at the end of the day I grew up with like not a lot and it was one of those things I, I grew up looking at social media where people were celebrating their success and splashing the cash and people were worshipping it on reality tv I'm in that weird like bubble where people were were, were celebrating it yeah. and now it's like taboo now it's, it's, it's changed, distasteful it? yeah. now it's this and now it's that and especially for a woman to be doing it and I'm just a bit like oh god I'm not trying to shove it in people's face to show off it's more of a a it's a marketing exercise yeah. because it gets we're talking content. about it now we're talking about yeah. it and b it was for my friends because I, I, I don't see my friends a lot and every year I throw a, a themed party and this year was Barbie and everybody awesome. came dressed as Barbie as Ken. And, and, right. and I was looking for it to hire a pink Ferrari or something sports mm. car to have on the front as a prop. And then I was like, it'll just be fun to wrap my car. And also yeah. we just partnered with Cinch and I was really excited about that partnership. And I wanted There's to do a, a token. Angle. There was a business yeah, angle so it. I could get some content yeah. for it as well and just have a laugh. And my four-year-old daughter loved it. And now it's black and it's boring and I want the pink back. Yeah, well, you should do it. Yeah, Bonnie it. actually wants to I love the fact color. that you did it. No. <laughs> and you mentioned uh, being a woman. I've yeah. got two, two girls growing up, 12 and 14. Yeah. Want them to be able to aspire to do whatever they want. Yeah. Have you had, of course, you're an entrepreneur and so on and you've smashed your own stigma and kind of glass ceilings, but have you felt that, that kind of challenge as mm -hmm. an extra challenge being female? in business, entrepreneurial yeah. side of things? Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel mm. it, because sometimes I do, and it's, um, but it's, it's so, it's not all the time, it's just on no. occasions, and actually, like, I've never done well with being put in a box. That's no. where I try and, like, literally punch my way out of it. If I feel like someone's putting me in a box, I'll try yeah. and, like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah break it down um so i don't take it too personally but then i do understand like there's layers to it like, as you get in as, as i'm going further in business i do understand that there are still maybe little boys clubs that females aren't invited into and i think mm. you know clicks and this and that and i think oh there's still a bit of a mm. barrier to be broken down especially when it comes to funding and things like that the, the, exactly the, the funding two like percent or something of founders I, and i learned that from female. grace beverly i didn't know a lot about that yeah. um, she was obviously blown away that we'd raised this 30 million i said well maybe it's because i've got a, a founder that's a, a male maybe i wouldn't have been able to do it on my own and it's a bit like 
I don't know. It's something no. that I want to look. You only know into. what you know. Yeah. Because I've spoken to Debbie uh, Wasco over um, on this program, mm. and I think it was one point eight percent. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, female founders get funding, but then I'm trying to work out whether that's because the mindset and the cultural side of things is that they're not they're not in the space to try Maybe. and raise, or whether there is you know, the, sort of the VC level. boys club that they're like you know or instantly judging from a female point of view. Mm. Tricky question to answer, but what advice would you give aspiring? female entrepreneurs, you know, my girls growing up, you know, mm. looking at the journey you've had and journey you're on, yeah. what advice would you give them? I just think like one thing that I've learned is business is no, there's no blueprint for it really. It's mm. whatever the hell your brain can conjure up and mm. go for it. Like, and, I, and don't put yourself or allow anybody to put you into a box. Like I probably was delayed in life until, until my, my late 20s and early 30s that I started mm. to feel a bit more in a confidence. When you're a young female, you listen to everything negative that people are saying, you really take that on board. Do not listen to other people's opinions no. of you and, and your box and what where you should be. Mm. Don't let somebody tell you that you can only no. be a hairdresser or a yeah. travel and tourism person. Like, just don't listen. Just if you, And if you don't know what you want to do, don't worry about that. Just no. try a lot of things. Like, And if it's not working out for you, move on yeah. and don't feel guilty about it. I think people feel like... They have to stay in something for so long, but if it's not serving you, move on and keep yeah. trying until you find something that there's that little feeling where you go, this is something. Yeah. I don't quite know what it is, but le start leaning into it more. So I just never let someone put you in a box mm -hmm. and lean into what feels good mm. and don't think that there's a blueprint. Like the world's evolving, massively evolving. Yeah. Technology's evolving. Business is evolving. You do you and what feels good. Jordan, thank you so much. You've been absolutely inspirational. Thank you so much for having me.